Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's so good to have you. Jungle Jerry here. We're still working on the tiki ceiling and the further tikification of our patio. We got the uh, ceiling tiles on in the last video. It's not really tiles, it's more like Lao Hala matting. And don't worry about the gaps, that's going to get covered with bamboo. And so what we're working on today is this area around the ceiling fan. It's time to cover that up. And in order to do that, what I'm actually going to use here is some three-quarter inch sizzle rope. So if you've been wanting to learn how to rope wrap, I'm going to show you how I do it. And I'm going to tell you right now, uh, this 150-foot bale of this rope is actually going to be for the post project that I'm going to do after this one, where I wrap the post in reed fencing and I'm going to do a rope wrap on the top and the bottom. Anytime you get rope for a project, Probably a good idea to just go ahead and get double what you think you're going to need. That certainly applied to the tiki bar, and in this case, I have uh, taken off quite a bit. Now, before you cut this stuff, one important thing to remember is to wrap it. I'm going to give it a couple of wraps here. It's going to do a couple of things. It's going to keep it from fraying. It's going to help hold it tight. And it's going to make your life a whole lot easier here. There we go. So when I made my cuts for this, I got kind of close, but I got some pretty big gaps here. I've also got a gap between the ceiling and the bell of the fan. And so we're going to get that hid. Uh, one of the things you're going to do is your, your first point with the rope, you're actually going to put a screw in. And the other thing that you can use uh, when you're going rope on top of rope is uh, a lot of people swear by this stuff that, uh, that do these wraps for crafts. It's E6000. I'm going to start wrapping around the bell and I'm going to work my way out until I get all of this right here covered. It's fun working with lamp fan blades here. Once you get uh, make contact with the, the head and the rope, just a, a little burp from the drill gun and you can actually hide it down inside of it. All right. See there Russ, you can't even see the line. Can't see the line, can you Russ? No. I got a muscle there I forgot about it from when I was a teenager. As you're going along, you may have to make some adjustments, add some extra screws. It's dusk and the mosquitoes are trying to have their own night at the tiki bar. Now another thing you can do is you can take a mallet and you can tap on the rope with the old mallet here. And what's going to happen is those fibers that are under tension, it can loosen them up. But you can also uh, pack that rope in real good there. She ain't perfect, but hell, it's a tiki bar. The sun is getting low on the horizon, and that's going to about do it for everything that I can get accomplished today. Ooh, check out my, my lights. I got my lights going here. Squirrel. <laughs> and we are on to the next part of building out our tikification of our tiki ceiling on the patio. We've got the Lao hollow matting up, and now it's time to go to the bamboo. And in order to do that, I wanted to get... 10 foot lengths, but the place that I ordered from was out of stock, so I had to go with eight. What that means is I got to do some measuring and I got to do some cutting. What I'm going to do now is I've got a mark up here from the other day. I want to verify that I am indeed dead center and I want to get a measurement if I can get my tape measure to cooperate here. And I am at 76 and a quarter, I'm at 75 and a half. So now I got to do some math. So after doing the math, I know I need to be six foot four inches. I'm going to mark out for that, make a little mark, and then cut her off. Yeah, I could use a powered saw, but the thing about it is, is bamboo can split really easily. Let me show you the end that I got by using the coping saw here. 
look at how smooth that end is I have not sanded it or done anything that's just using the coping saw now the one thing you've got to make sure of though is that you are absolutely square you know in a 90 degree angle otherwise when we go to fit it together we're going to have problems if you're going to err, err on the side of caution to the side that won't be seen but since it's going to be on the ceiling you're pretty much going to be able to see it so being square to it's very important I'm going to be using some of these screws that are kind of color matched to the bamboo. They've got a special uh, deal that comes with it, a little star pattern. And I've got a drill set up so that my thickness there is the same there. The only thing that's going to be holding it on are these threads. And so I'm going to pre-drill some holes, a couple of holes in each one of these. And I'm going to take it nice and easy into this bamboo. Bamboo can split very easily. You can see this piece here actually already has a little bit of a split here. So I'm going to be very careful here. There we go. Before I get down with my bamboo self, <laughs> yeah, I said it. I'm going to get these started here. That way when I get up there, all i got to do is send them home. These are eight by two and a half. I probably should have got some that were just a little bit longer. I think it's going to work though. The first piece of bamboo. I may have to move my uh, tiki's there. Hopefully not. I hope not. <laughs> nice and easy, darling. go good <laughs> it's gonna look good <laughs> I have set bamboo <laughs> yeah Measure twice, cut once. One thing you can do if you have a little uh, jig like this, is I'm gonna take that mark and I'm gonna get it really close to the edge here. And that's gonna help me maintain my 90 as well. And I'm gonna clearly be able to see that, yeah, I'm staying right on 90. This is gonna be important for this one. Give it two or three backward strokes if you're using a coping saw. Don't force it through either. Let the teeth do the work. And you'll wind up with a really nice smooth piece there. Can't beat that with a stingy stick. I want to line up this seam right here. I want it to be nice and flush. really don't want too much tension on these yeah I am gonna have to come in with another one there and pull that up a little bit but you don't want over time bamboo will split and so you really when you put it up there you just want it to hold you don't want to put so much tension on that screw that it puts pressure in here because it will split it over time you can increase the longevity by not doing that the first row is in and so now the grand plan is what I'm going to do is I'm going to do all of my cross pieces where these gaps are. I'm going to get those done. I'm actually going to do one extra one that goes up to the fan because I had to take this 4 by 8 square, cut it in half in order to fit it around the fan. And so I'm going to run uh, one more long ways here, here, and then there. And then once I've got that done, the long stretch of the patio was like 17 feet and some inches, and I've got 8 foot long bamboo poles. By going ahead and doing these cross pieces like this, then we'll all have to, all have to do is take the tape measure, measure for each section, honk off a piece, put it up there, and we're good to go. And just for the record, I do have a good plan B. If something happens in the center and these don't meet up good, you can always take a piece of rope, cut it up, and then glue it over the uh, joints. You're meant to do that. If you're gonna ma made up joints, 
out in the open on your ceiling, it's going to be a focal point. You need to buy enough bamboo so that you can match up these edges. Now, if you order half rounds, they're going to take the exact same pole and they're going to mate them up in there after they split it. So you will be able to mate them up. Uh, I may have already used this one, but it's much more important. If you can't get a perfect match, then try to do a little overlap job there like that. And that is going to work there. It's okay to overlap it a little bit. You're good and tight there, and I'm going to send her home. On how she's doing here. Ah, oh, I got off a little bit. Look at there. I'm going to back it out, and I'm going to make it right. I'm going to go just like that right there. Take what we get. get down here and batten down the other hatch here. There we go. That'll do. The gaps, no big deal, because we're going to make them go away with the bamboo. And with this final piece of bamboo, I christen her the Leaky Tiki. I can't tell you how thrilled I am with this. Kiwi Katie thinks it's absolutely horrible though. What? I do not. <laughs> this was my Mother's Day present. It is her Mother's Day present. I made you bamboo. And I am happy. She's actually happy. <laughs> Next up, we're going to do the lights. And I got a funky looking thing over here that I'm going to show you. Um, I really don't want to show you, but I'm going to show you. Uh, I made a little access so that I can get some lights. I'm going to actually restring lights. I've got some uh, black colored lights. I thought they were brown. They were supposed to be brown, but they're black. Uh, they got the nice little globes on them, and I'm just going to string them around. Not the Edison style, because those are just too doggone long for our patio. These are going to be uh, rounder. We're going to get those strung up, and this project will be in the books. And the nice thing is, is they actually give you extra bulbs. There will be a link to everything that I have worked with for the most part in the description below the video down below. I'm actually going to hang them with these little bad boys right here. Uh, you just put it right up there, you can nail it in, and I can let them dangle. I use these because the little uh, Christmas light style just don't project enough light out here. While I was building this thing, when I had the other lights down, I would turn on the back bar lights and the cocktail sign light 
and it was still pitch black in here. Couldn't take pictures, really couldn't even sit out here. Um, these lights are absolutely critical. But when you're putting them up, they are glass and they will break real easy if they hit your step ladder or anything else. So then don't drop them. <laughs> Murphy's Law, here we go. <laughs> and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this little point right here and feed it through. I'm gonna come around on the back side of the thatch. I actually have a, a bit of a gap there by design so that I can route through it here, but it's going to hide that place where it goes in at too. And I can't get too close to the ceiling fan here either, so I have to be mindful of that. What I think I'm going to do is I am going to, I'm going to put one home right here. Well guys, I finished her in the dark as far as getting the light strung up and here is what it looks like. Oh. I am very happy with the results. Very happy indeed. Well guys, that'll just about do it. I, uh, I didn't break but one bulb. I'm very happy about that. I've got to clean up out here and then I'm going to eat dinner and I'm going to try to edit some of this video tonight. And then I got a, I still got a garden to finish planting too, and I got to do the posts, and I've got so many things that are coming. You're going to enjoy it. So be sure and hit the subscribe button and the bell notification. And if you got time, run over to Facebook at Tiki71 and join that. You can send pictures of your projects, and we can talk and message. And I'm also on Instagram at the Tiki71. Guys, we really appreciate you watching. I hope you found this useful, especially if it's something you're planning. And we'll see you next time.